Assalamu alaikum comrades. Let's talk about Soviet mining helmets. You see, lately I've been coming across a lot of photographs of Soviet miners, and I just was drawn to these very particular kinds of helmets that they were wearing because they're very unique and they, they are indeed unique to the region. Primarily worn from the 1930s to 50s, though it did have extended use after that, these kinds of helmets or hats for miners, industrial workers, and even those working at chemical plants. This hat was nicknamed the shell due to its shape. I think it kind of resembles one of those bowls made from vinyl records, but I see the turtle shell as well. It's also called Stokonovki, after the coal miner Alexei Stonokov from Donetsk, who in 1935 mined the most coal along with two other workers, and thus the hat was named after him. Now this was a very significant thing in Soviet history, not just because he mined 102 tons of coal in one shift, but because this began what would be called the Stokonovite movement. I might be putting the emphasis on the wrong place here or pronouncing it wrong. As long as you understand what I'm saying, I think it's okay. I'm not the best with pronunciation. Anyways, what was the Stokhanovite movement? Workers from all sorts of fields began to model themselves after Alexei and what he managed to do, and they would openly call themselves Stokhanovites. This was a movement of workers who modeled themselves after him and took pride in their ability to produce more than what was required to collectively strengthen the socialist state. This entire movement would become a symbol of the entire industrialization of the Soviet Union and this period of time in history of the 1930s to 60s. The period of coal mining, of various mining industries, and construction of subways, and excavation of railway tunnels. This was all defined by the Stoganovites and, more importantly, that helmet. The helmet even became popular in Soviet newsreels and feature films. Leading actors from movies and real-life workers inspired the country towards labor achievements and served as an example for young people in the Soviet Union. Alexei was by far the most famous miner to have ever lived. As far as what this helmet is made from, it's a mixture of pressed fibers like cardboard as well as Bakelite resin. Other variations do exist made out of leather and I believe it would be adopted into harder materials later on as well. There was plenty of information about how comfortable it was for the workers who used them, being light and breathable. It allowed for much better conditions while doing relatively uncomfortable work. It provided ventilation unlike other kinds of helmets and work gear, and it didn't inhibit any range of motion or block sights. The imagery, not just in photographs and movies, but poster art of this kind of hat is extensive. This hat became a symbol of industrialization in Soviet Russia and symbolized the progress of the Soviet Union. When mine workers were celebrated and laborers of all kinds were frequently celebrated in the Soviet Union, the mine workers would always be wearing this kind of hat. It was symbolic, to say the least. It's also estimated that during World War II, 245,000 women were working in the mines. This wasn't unique to wartime conditions. Women had been working in the mines since about 1915. So even in the Russian Empire, this was a profession among all kinds of people. Of course, it was also dangerous and even more dangerous then and something that is needed. So it's not something coveted, but it is necessary. And the Soviet Union celebrated necessary labor. It wasn't looked down upon. But it's always interesting looking at photographs and illustrations of workers at a time period where in other parts of the world you wouldn't see women depicted doing this kind of work. But you see it pretty equally distributed in representation among men and women, proportionate to how many men and women were actually working in this field. So I wanted to take some time to show you some imagery of women as minors. I'll start with this. This is a poster calling on youth and women specifically to become miners at the top it says i will be a miner and then it addresses youth and girls and this is in 1945 and here are some more photographs I, some of them honestly are a little concerning just like knowing how 
horrendous some of the working situations are even in the best case scenario in a mine anywhere in the world it is a hard job and you're inhaling a lot of things that you don't want to be inhaling and so seeing young woman covered in soot and working hard isn't always this empowering thing it can sometimes be quite jarring to us today but as i mentioned it's important to understand that this was not something looked down upon it was celebrated and people were rewarded for their sacrifices and labor like this being appreciated went a long way and culturally even in russia today there is this mentality of women to always be able to support themselves that you should always have the ability and a job or something to fall back on that allows you to fend for yourself in society and that is something as well to keep in mind Along with this hat, a worker would usually don a balaclava and some sort of, I suppose you could call it a canopy or a drape made out of cotton fabric to protect the ears and neck from dust, as well as chin straps. And in the front, there is a visor and fasteners for a headlamp, also made of thick fiber material. In the back, there's a loop for fixing the electrical wire towards the lamp or whatever sort of element you have using as a light in a dark mining situation. Oddly enough, I haven't found much information about how much protection it provided. I think we look at this compared to other kinds of helmets and we think, mm, if it's light and breathable, did it actually protect a worker from falling debris? At the end of the day, I just think it looks really cool. And I'm sure you think so too. I mean, look at it. They knew it looked good. That's why it's on so many posters. And that's why it became such an iconic symbol of a certain faction of workers within the Soviet Union. This hat represented something. How could it not? Look at it. I really want one of these helmets for my own personal collection. As someone who wears a certain kind of hat every single day, I do really love learning and having different kinds of headwear from Soviet history as well. And you can find these for sale in the Western market. I've seen a few listings on Etsy and eBay, but they're very, very expensive for what they are, um, especially if you find one that isn't completely ruined or covered in stuff. But I have heard that they are used in a more modern setting, same shape, same style, in places like Romania, so you might want to start searching in Romanian for a cheaper option. It won't be Soviet though. Anyways comrades, please be inspired by history, thank you for joining me, and let me know down below what do you think of these hats. I feel like it might be polarizing, but I hope most of you agree with me. It looks pretty cool. Alright, goodbye.